Hey boys and girls, welcome back to your science lesson. So this will be our last science lesson about plant and animal relationships. And we are going to um, explain the problem in the reserve. We're going to do this by thinking about um, all of the things that we learned throughout this unit. So last lesson we learned about um, seed dispersal and how do animals help that happen. So what do you know about how seeds get to new places in their habitats? That's the question you need to think about as we learn more um, and explain in this lesson. The big idea that we need to take away from last lesson was that animals sometimes disperse, that means gives out, the seeds by eating the fruit, right? So the bear eats the fruit from the, tr from the bushes and then he goes to another place and he leaves his droppings with the seeds inside of his droppings and of course they go into the ground and that's how a new bush grows in that place in the habitat. So birds do it and bees do it. And that's how the seeds get dispersed throughout that habitat. So that means that some plants depend. That means they need those animals to disperse, give out their seeds. And these animals also depend on the plants from the food. So we need to think about the, the birds. They need the trees. They need the fruit from the trees. The, the bears need the fruit from the bushes, just like the bees need the, the nectar from the flowers in order to survive. So this is our big question that we're trying to help the scientists answer. Why aren't the chalta seeds getting to places where they can grow? So if all of these animals live within the reserve and all of these other plants are growing, then why aren't the chalta seeds getting to new places to grow? So maybe one of the animals that usually spread these seeds has a problem. So here are two separate habitat diagrams. From the last lesson, I've included the Colorado mountain, but here's a new one from the broadleaf forest habitat. And these are all of the animals and trees that live within this habitat. So the Indian fig tree and the gore animal and the chalta tree and the elephant, the Asian elephant, the jungle crow and the red silk tree and the tiger. They all depend on each other. They all eat fruit and from all of these trees to spread them around the habitat to make sure there's more trees for them to live off of and they all live off of each other. The same way if you look at the Colorado mountain habitat, the hawk, he needs to eat the snake and the chipmunk needs to eat the pine tree seeds so that he can disperse the seeds and more pine trees can grow. And the same thing with the hummingbird and the black bear. They eat from the larkspur bushes and the currant bushes so that more currant bushes can grow. So here is um, an explanation about the two types of animals that live within the reserve, the tigers and the elephants. And what one scientist collected was some information about them. He noticed that in 1995, there was 220 um, number of elephants living within the reserve. But then if you look at the, the next two years later, 1997, there were none. And by 2015, there was none. And do you think that that might affect um, the Chalta trees? So remember these maps that we studied a few lessons ago, we started to look at all of the Chalta trees and the fig trees and the red silk trees and the sal trees in 1995. And then we noticed that there was um, a few more growing within the 2015. So if you think about it, if all of these trees and bushes are growing and they and no one is eating from them, and there's a lot of them, but there's no one there to eat from the trees, um, why do you think that that's why do you think that that's happening? Why do you think that there's no more chalta trees growing around in this habitat in other places? So I want you to really pay attention to one little clue that are on these maps. If you look at the 1995 map, it looks very different. One, one key thing looks very different in the 1995 map um, and the 2015 map. There's a fence that they built in 1996 around the reserve. 
So that might have effect on the animals getting to the trees, don't you think? So again, we are putting these ideas together and trying to think, why aren't the Chalta seeds getting to new places where they can grow? So I want you to remember that you can look back at all of these pictures to help you decide why aren't these Chalta trees growing? And maybe, just maybe, the fence might have something to do with it. So here are some words that we have been using throughout this unit. Seeds, dispend, um, depend, and habitat. Depend, remember we said that it means that they need each other, that they depend on each other. And habitat is the places that we've been studying. It's the places where plants and animals grow. So I have made a connection with these three words. And this is what I'm hoping that you will do later on when you're writing your scientific explanation, that you are thinking about seeds and how they depend on animals and to live and to grow and in different places in the habitat. So that's why I wrote it where some seeds in droppings and in fur of the animals depend on animals to move them to new places in their habitat. Because that's the only way that seeds can really move around and grow in different places. They need the animals to help with, help them with that. So here is your final activity. You're going to write a scientific explanation. You're going to put all of the information that you have learned from this lesson and all of the other lessons, and you're going to write down some ideas that you think are the reason why the childhood trees are not growing. And be very specific and use some scientific words because we have to give this information to the scientists to help them solve that question. So here's what the, what the worksheet looks like. I put a graphic organizer here for you to help you with your scientific explanation. So the first part of this is to think about um, your topic sentence, which says the, the child to seeds are not getting to places where they can grow because... And then try, I put some keywords here in the middle on the arrows um, for you to see them and use them in some way within your writing. So you need to think about what would support your idea? What would support your topic sentence? So maybe if you said something about the animals and the fence, um, maybe you can prove that in your in your the yellow box below that says the Chalta seeds depend on on what? What do they depend on? Who do they who do they depend on in order to to grow and to be in new places? And then support that with some ideas that you have seen throughout this lesson. And then the second part of your your assignment is to explain why aren't new Chalta trees growing in the Bengal Tiger Reserve. The new childhood trees are not growing because their seeds are not getting what they need to grow and explain why. So you can do that here. This is your final worksheet and make it great. Use as, as much scientific evidence as you can. Use the words that we've shown you within this lesson. And I hope it's a great one and I can't wait to read what you are writing. So good luck, boys and girls. And I'll see you next time.